boxers would frequently oil themselves up before coming out for a match because it shows off their muscles better, making their bodies. Hey, man, hold on, bro. Wait a minute. Look, 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 man. We know this was a thing, you know. Wrestlers have been doing this for a very long time. It's just, you know. <laughs> Anything re re revolving around baby oil right now is a, a sensitive subject. <laughs> I wonder if some wrestlers went to some of these Diddy parties. Oh, they I know they must have felt right at home if they did. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not, not accusing anybody, but, you know, just putting the two together. Wrestlers love them some baby oil, and so did Diddy. We just don't know who was there. <laughs> What's good, y'all? Your boy Ross back at again with another video. So I'm gonna check out 101 WWE facts you didn't know about. Always like these factoid type videos, information or you know facts that we didn't know about. It gives you a little bit more insight into you know what goes on in WWE. So we're gonna check this out. Should be a good one. Appreciate all love support. Let's get right into this one, man. One till is this on? One till. Ever wonder how Pyro works in the WWE? Oh, wow. Woo! Well, the fireworks that shoot out aren't the ones that make the noise. They're basically just sparklers. The pyro itself is quiet, but the bang comes from a rack of concussion pots and simulators which are tucked away somewhere behind the stage. So oh. the noise is above and away from the immediate area. Wow, I never knew that. <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely going to be hitting a wow. I never knew that. <laughs> That's crazy. This idea originally came from Bad Blood 1997 during Kane's original debut. The explosion of the fire looked cool, but didn't sound as expected. Oh my God, wait a minute. It's Paul Bear. So uh. WWE started putting in the sound after. That explains why Cody's eardrums haven't exploded with that pyro at the beginning of his entrance. Wrestling is all about theatrics. Cool. The more significant a move appears, the more impactful it seems. That's why many wrestlers wet their hair before a match. Wet hair is denser and therefore moves more dramatically than dry hair, mm -hmm. helping strikes to appear more forceful. Because wet hair is heavier, it's easier to move in the front of the face with a simple tilt of the head, which helps to conceal communication when a wrestler is calling a spot in the mm -hmm. ring. Do that! And Double Rage cannot believe it! Well, Side slam! How do you get his shoulder up? Oh, no! Of course, one risk of resting with wet hair is that it will dry halfway through the match and ultimately defeat the purpose of looking good. Here's the WWE nightmare because you gotta take on that man. Wrestlers would frequently oil themselves up before coming out for a match because it shows off their muscles better, making their bodies. Hey man, hold on, bro. Wait a minute. Look, 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 man. We know this was a thing, you know. Wrestlers have been doing this for a very long time. It's just, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Anything re re revolving around baby oil right now is a, a sensitive subject. <laughs> I wonder if some wrestlers went to some of these Diddy parties. Oh, they I know they must have felt right at home if they did. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not not accusing anybody, but you know, just putting the two together. Wrestlers love them some baby oil, and so did Diddy. We just don't know who was there. <laughs> These look more impressive, but the added benefit is that it also helps with sliding in and out of locks and creates less friction when trying to do some maneuvers, and it's particularly effective against Matt Burn. It was more popular in the 90s, with less and less superstars doing it in the current day, but there are still a few wrestlers who keep up the tradition. Wrestlers tend to shave their bodies on a regular basis, so they not only have that smooth look appearance, but in respect for their opponents, as body hair can trap bacteria, causing body odor which can be unpleasant for their opponents during close contact mm -hmm. moves. Why do WWE wrestlers shave their armpits? Most guys do it just for that smooth look, for appearance of sake. WWE treats male and female mm -hmm. wrestlers differently when it comes to an Hey man, you don't want to be smelling bad out there in the ring, man. Seeing their weights. While male wrestlers often have their weights announced during their introductions. <laughs> Pounds of crap. WWE does not do this for female wrestlers. Uh, that, that is true. 
That's crazy. When you really think about it, that is true. They don't really do that for the ladies. Like, they don't announce their weight. I, I think it's more like a formality thing. Like, it's, it's supposed to be, like, impolite to ask a woman's weight. To be honest with you, and I think that's that's what I've always been taught. It's impolite to ask a woman's weight. <laughs> so this practice can be attributed to a few factors. Firstly, it's a social norm not to ask women about their weight. And additionally, go. in previous generations, WWE's weight divisions such as cruiserweight and heavyweight only applied specifically to male wrestlers. Since there are no similar weight classes for female wrestlers, there's less emphasis on announcing their weight. However, yeah. more recently, WWE does announce the weights of some of its female wrestlers, including Nia Jax. <laughs> Nia Jax WWE is a big woman. Good guys on the left side of the ring and the heels on the right during tag team matches. This helps clearly distinguish between heroes and villains, making yeah. it easier for the audience to follow the action. Placing the faces on the left side also enhances the viewer engagement by allowing the camera to capture their facial expressions more effectively, uh -huh. which helps fans connect with the characters on a deeper emotional level. In professional wrestling, referees play a pivotal role beyond merely enforcing rules and counting pinfalls. Equipped with earpieces, they communicate not only with the wrestlers, but also with the production team. This enables them to provide real time instructions instructions, ensuring wrestler safety and adapting the match when necessary. For example, referees can signal adjustments if a match needs to be shortened or extended, mm -hmm. or if on-the-spot changes to the storyline are required. But you are wearing an earpiece. Right. So talk us through what you're hearing. We'll tell you when to raise the title up. If I'm reprimanding one of the boys, I'm not really reprimanding them. I'm acting like I'm pointing at them, mean face, and yeah. I'm calling spots. At each WWE event, a digital... And, and that makes sense when you really think about it because they got to tell the the, uh, the wrestlers, hey, we're going to a break, we're going to a break. We're going to break in five seconds so they can kind of get ready for the, you know, the break spot, the rest spot. You know, saying or they telling them, hey, we only got a few few minutes left. The show's about to wrap up. Hurry up. Let's get to the spot. That makes sense. That makes sense. Because how would they know unless the referee's telling them? clock is placed along the main TV camera. This arrangement aids wrestlers by giving them accurate details about the timing of their matches and the scheduling of commercial breaks. Oh. This information is crucial for wrestlers to avoid using a signature move or key spot at the wrong time, ensuring their performance aligns with the show's structure. A wrestler going through the ring is always an imp And I do think the referees also uh, tell them it as well to kind of, you know, remind them. Impressive moment, and it involves meticulous preparation behind the scenes. A crew member is always stationed under the ring during televised WWE shows. This individual is responsible for tasks such as tightening cables and positioning weapons. Before a wrestler is slammed through the ring, this crew member removes the wooden boards and supports from the area where the wrestler will land, while ensuring uh... that the foam padding underneath remains intact to maintain the ring's shape and cushioning. Have you ever wondered how The Undertaker stays hidden under the ring for so long, or how he knows precisely when to make his dramatic entrance? Over the years, WWE has revealed that wrestlers use a monitor and headset under mm -hmm. the rings the same form. This setup allows them to watch the show and communicate with WWE officials backstage. Fans have become aware of this thanks to spotty monitors placed under the ring, which mm -hmm. often become visible just before the lights go out and a wrestler like The Undertaker or other superstars makes a surprise appearance. Seeing a monitor under the ring often indicates that a surprise entrance is imminent. How often yep. have you heard Michael Cole claim that... We recently just seen that with uh, Jimmy Uso's return at uh, Hell uh, Bad Blood. Oh, it's sold out tonight. We are two weeks away from WrestleMania. In reality, this isn't always accurate. WWE often uses this claim to enhance the perception of their shows and make them appear more significant and must-see. However, thanks to social media, fans can upload photos showing the mm -hmm. action attendance, revealing that many shows have had empty seats. Introducing a table into a match in... Yep. Uh, you know, it, I think it's less now. Now they actually are selling out. <laughs> they actually are selling out a lot more people are going to the shows now it, this is a boom period for wwe at the moment then he heightens the crowd interest and a wrestler going through a table often generates one of the biggest reactions of the night the tables used are made from very thin chipboard designed to break easily under the weight of a person mm -hmm. creating a dramatic explosive effect when they collapse however the metal poles supporting the tables can sometimes cause injury and yeah. occasionally tables fail to break properly this usually happens if a wrestler doesn't land in the center so it may require a repeat spot to achieve the desired effect mm -hmm. Wait a minute now. Oh. Oh, the oh, look out. oh my god. And Angle's gonna try one more time, and that time the table breaks. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh.
Your PWE matches ladders serve two main purposes, as a tool for climbing to win the match, and as a weapon. This dual function requires the ladder be both strong enough to support wrestlers' weight, and safe enough to use as a weapon. Unlike traditional ladders, WWE ladders are designed with some modifications for safety. Mm -hmm. The steel used in these ladders is hollow, yeah. making them lighter and less dangerous when used to strike opponents. Additionally, the center of the ladder is intentionally made weaker to facilitate dramatic spots where the ladder can break or collapse during a match. <laughs> Oh my god. He said he was going to. Oh. And we can see Lawrence right now on the ladder. On the ladder. The pain is still there, though. <laughs> In WWE, the glass featured in segments, particularly during high impact moments, is generally not real glass. Yeah. It's commonly made from breakaway materials intended to resemble glass, but with added safety. This breakaway glass is often crafted from sugar and other substances, engineered to shatter easily and safely to minimize the risk of injury to the wrestlers. This was completely safe and it wasn't going to hurt or cut you in any way. Yeah, sugar glass. Seth Rollins first joined WWE's main roster, he made the mistake of using an ice pack on his neck after a match. John Cena questioned Rollins about how many matches he had worked, to which Rollins said three. Cena's point was that newcomers who were expected to build up their endurance and toughness shouldn't need ice packs so early in their WWE careers. Similarly, Summer Rae faced a similar situation when Randy Orton noticed her icing her foot. The underlying belief in WWE at the time was that new wrestlers should be able to handle the physical demands of the job without needing ice packs, which was seen as a sign of over-reliance or a lack of resilience. This approach mm. Approach is part of a broader culture where newcomers are often pushed to demonstrate their toughness and ability to endure That's the grueling schedule of professional wrestling. If a fan interferes in a match and a wrestler responds by attacking the fan, the wrestler may face fines. According to Mark Henry, he has witnessed situations where wrestlers will find $10,000 for reacting physically to fans who invaded the ring. WWE typically covers the cost of medical treatments and rehabilitation. That sucks. Nah, man, somebody attacking, I, I get it. They they're trying to, you know, protect, you know, their that company in their image, but if somebody gets in that ring and there ain't enough officials to get there and they trying to attack me, oh, they getting the beats. They getting the beats and I'm putting a submission hold on them until they pass out. Like, fuck that. Fuck the fine. If they're trying to attack me, oh, nah. Even if you getting in that squared circle, bro, you pay to be there. You don't pay to get in that squared circle. That shit's sacred. And no, no, no. If those officials, the security don't get to you in time, you, you catching the stomping. For injuries sustained during official matches or training sessions within their facilities. However, if a wrestler is injured outside of WWE's events or training environments, they are generally responsible for their own medical expenses. Sounds WWE about right. owns all intellectual property related to its wrestlers. This encompasses ring names, entrance themes, personal brands, catchphrases, and images used for merchandise. Surprisingly, even a wrestler's real name can fall under WWE's ownership. Yeah. For example, WWE has the rights to John Cena's name, despite it being seen as actual name. On your own name, WWE still currently owns that and they get a piece of any project that you're a part of sure you okay with that john cena yeah. has openly acknowledged the arrangement and expressed that he is comfortable paying royalties to the wwe when using his name however it's important to note that not all wwe superstars are subject to the same ip ownership terms as individual contracts can vary just like dwayne johnson who got his the rock ip back from wwe mm -hmm. during his hiatus from and you know uh john has definitely stated like he's okay with it because he knows wwe essentially made john cena who he is now not the person but the icon the star the wrestler that everyone knows john cena is a household name he's a household name with the rock he's a household name with stone cold he's a household name with the undertaker he's a household name he knows that only happens if that doesn't happen if you know wwe is not involved so i get why he's like yeah they get a percentage of it because I'm not in these movies, I'm not in these television shows, I'm not in these commercials, if it's not for WWE. So I, I understand. <laughs> From wrestling between 1998 and 2002, two-time WWE Hall of Famer Shawn Michaels was reportedly well compensated by WWE. The company paid Michaels $750,000 per year for four Ooh. years, totaling $3 million over that period, Ooh. to remain at home and not work. This decision made by Vince McMahon was likely influenced by McMahon's desire to prevent Michaels from potentially signing... Yep, that's really what it was. He just didn't want him to go to fucking WCW. 
with WCW, ensuring he remained under WWE's control and avoiding any competitive disadvantage. Vince McMahon has reportedly spent more on hush money for his sexual misconduct allegations than he did for buying WCW and ECW. It's estimated yeah. that he paid around $15 million to several women to keep quiet, while he only spent about $5 million to acquire both WCW and ECW. Uh -huh. Kevin Sullivan booked his own divorce. Sullivan insisted Chris Benoit and woman room and ride together on the road, but it ultimately led to woman's affair with Benoit and Kevin and Chris's legendary feud. In the early 1980s, as Hulk Hogan was on the rise to becoming a wrestling icon, his manager Jimmy Hart suggested that Hogan wear red and yellow. Hart's idea was based on the fact that these colors were prominently featured in McDonald's branding, which was a widely recognized and popular chain across America. The vibrant, eye-catching colors helped Hogan stand out and resonate with fans, making him more memorable and marketable. Hogan embraced the idea and the red and yellow became synonymous with his real American persona, contributing significantly to his iconic status in wrestling history. It worked. The Undertaker was initially reluctant to revert to his dead man gimmick in 2004 because he valued the versatility of his American badass persona. He appreciated the freedom it gave him to perform different styles of matches and express a broader range of in-ring abilities. The American badass character allowed him more creative freedom, whereas returning to the dead man would mm -hmm. mean conforming to the limitations of that persona. It took significant persuasion and a lot of begging before The Undertaker agreed to go back to his iconic dead man character. China was supposed to be the first female- It worked though. It, it worked. Both of those character gimmicks worked, honestly member of the iconic NWO and was on the verge to sign a contract with WCW when Shane oh, McMahon wow. made the save by informing her that the WWE had decided to take her in. Taboo Tuesday 2004 wow. was the first WWE event to feature fan voting as a major element. This interactive approach allowed fans to vote on various aspects of the too. show, including match stipulations and opponents. One of the featured matches on the undercard was for the World Heavyweight Championship. Triple H was scheduled to defend the title against one of three potential challengers chosen by the fans. Chris Benoit, Edge or Shawn Michaels. The fans voted Shawn Michaels as the challenger with 39% of the vote. Originally, if Edge had won the fan vote instead of Michaels, he was scripted to win the World Heavyweight Championship against Triple H. Wow. The voting was legitimate. It turns out that if I had won the voting that night, I would have won the world title. And I was like 2% behind. I just thought... Wow. Because <laughs> at one point, I, I was I, I used to think, ah, oh, this had to be rigged, but they did say, no, this was legitimate... The voting system was legitimate. So the fact that he was supposed to win the world title there, oh, that would have been crazy. Um, son of a bitch. You know you can't beat Triple H, and I would have. You took it away, you selfish son of a bitch. Nobody tapped out to a submit. There's some realism behind that that promo. That's cool. Mission hold until the mid 90s. It was first done inadvertently when UFC fighter Paul Varelands was in a match against Taz in ECW. He got it on. Varelands tapped out. Varelands has tapped out. It became popular in WWE when Ken Shamrock arrived. His first two televised matches were no holds barred matches. First against Vernon White on Raw, and then against Vader on an In Your House. Both matches ended with the opponent tapping out. Shamrock. Taking some liberties here. God damn, bro. You, He's got the you tapping out from punches? That's crazy. Mission move on Vader. He's turning that. That's all. That's all. That's all. John Cena was the first one to point at the WrestleMania sign after hold winning. Hold on, hold on. So basically, there was no submissions like that pretty much back then? A bitch. Nobody tapped out to a submission hold until the mid 90s. Oh, that's crazy. That's crazy. John Cena was the first one to point at the WrestleMania sign after winning the 2008 Royal Rumble match. Until then, the champions only celebrated and stared at the sign from a distance, but no one pointed to it. This became uh -huh. a trend and everyone started to follow the footpaths of Cena in the upcoming years. It was a cool visual. Made his entrance countless times, but one particularly rare moment occurred during the first Insurrection pay-per-view in the UK. For this event, Triple H made a memorable appearance with an oversized water bottle, which was four times the size of his usual one. The sight of the giant water bottle was quite comical, and even resembled the oversized bottle featured in the No Mercy video game, adding a unique and humorous touch to his entrance. <laughs> Alexa Bliss, standing at just over five feet tall, is known for her nickname Five Feet of Fury. When she won the WWE Raw Women's Championship at Payback 2017, the standard title belt was indeed a bit too large for a frame. 
frame. To accommodate her size, WWE made adjustments by shortening the strap of the belt so oh, that wow. it would fit her better. This customization ensured that the title would look proportionate and comfortable on her. Rene Dupree was the youngest champion in WWE. He won the World Tag Team Champion at age 19. Oh, this wow. was then surpassed by Nicholas Crone, the son of yeah, WWE we've, official we've John Crone, who competed at WrestleMania 34 alongside Braun Strowman to win the WWE Raw Tag Team Champion. That's, that's uh, look, it's cool for him as a mommy. He'll always remember that. I'm not taking away from that, but <sighs> it, it, the tab belts were fucking garbage at this point, bro. No one cared. <laughs> from Cesaro and Sheamus at just 10 years old. On the following episode of WWE Monday Night Raw, Strowman and Nicholas were forced to relinquish the Raw Tag Team titles due to Nicholas being in the fourth grade. Seth Rollins has had more successful defenses of the Raw Women's Championship than Sasha Banks, who has yet to record any successful defenses. At Extreme Rules wow. 2019, Seth Rollins and Becky Lynch, both holding world titles, defended their belts in a mixed tag team match against Lacey Evans and Baron Corbin. Technically, Rollins has defended the Raw Women's Championship successfully once, <laughs> surpassing Banks who has zero successful defenses. In 2011, Kelly Kelly made history by successfully defending the World Heavyweight Championship. She teamed up with the then champion Edge in a two on three handicap match with the title on the line. Kelly Kelly's team emerged victorious, and by winning the match, she effectively defended the championship. Yeah. Shawn Michaels is the wrestler who has forfeited most titles in WWE history. Chris Jericho never had a major title run as a face. All of his six world title runs in WWE were as a heel. Christian is the only wrestler to win a championship in three consecutive WrestleManias, 2017 and 18. Mm. Brock Lesnar is the only wrestler to have won multiple world championships and nothing but world titles he has never captured any secondary title or tag team titles the wwe championship you know what that's right he's only won world titles they just pushed him to the main event no secondary titles at all that's crazy changed hands 11 times in 1999 the most times what? ever recorded in history there were seven different champions wow. even including vince mcmahon the miz is the only but to, to play devil's advocate there Bro, they had so many top guys. Think about that. They had so many top guys. The titles were changing. <laughs> they had that many top guys at that time, so only WWE superstar to have held three championships at the same time. The Undertaker and Batista are notable WWE superstars who have never won the Intercontinental Championship. Mm. Similarly, John Cena, Sheamus, and Brock Lesnar have also not claimed the title. Yep. However, since Cena, Sheamus, and Lesnar are still active in the wrestling world, they might still have the opportunity to add the Intercontinental Championship to their list of accomplishments in the future. Randy Savage lost all six of his world titles to the same two men, Hulk Hogan and Ric Flair. Yep. Eight seconds was all it took for Diesel to defeat WWE Champion Bob Backlund and claim the title in Madison Square Garden on November 26, 1994. This match holds the record for the shortest WWE title match in history. Opportunity when I booked in the midsection. And Jack Damn. And in a record setting eight seconds. Jinder Mahal's single WWE Championship reign is longer than all four of Edge's combined. All three members of the wow. Shield from a different member of the Shield wait to win their minute. first. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on. Wait. Wait. What? What? When I booked in the midsection. And Jack Knight. And in a record setting eight seconds. Jinder Mahal's single WWE Championship reign is longer than all four of Edge's combined. All that can't be right, bro. That can't be. That can't. That can't. That can't be right, bro. No, bro. No fucking way is that right. No, bro. I, I refuse to believe that. All three members of the Shield pinned a different member of the Shield to win their first WWE Championship. Uh huh. Yep. Great Paul storytelling there. World champion in four different decades. Mm -hmm. Listen to this. To become a heavyweight champion of the world. And by God, he has done it. Has just cost KO the title tonight. Jack Hammer. Shoulders down. He did it. Turn back the clock. As of now, no male WWE superstar born in the 1990s has won a world championship on the main roster. Cody Rhodes mm. once won a championship from himself when he and Ted DiBiase beat Bob Holly oh, and Cody yeah. for the world tag titles in Night of Champions one. 2008. Ted DiBiase was in search of a partner for his upcoming match against Hardcore Holly and Cody Rhodes. In an unexpected twist, Rhodes turned on Holly and ended up being DiBiase's secret ally. DiBiase wants whoa, 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 what the? <laughs> oh, oh! Impact is the right word, I'm dumbfounded! 
about it. I don't understand this. Raven has had 37 <laughs> wrestling title reigns, with 27 of those being the hardcore title. Jeez. Jake the Snake Roberts has never held any title in WWE. All seven of Edge and Christian's tag team title reigns took place between WrestleMania 16 and WrestleMania 17. Ricky Steamboat holds the record for the longest gap between WrestleMania appearances, spanning 21 years. He Sheesh. competed at WrestleMania 4 in 1988 and did not return to the event until WrestleMania 25 in 2009. WrestleMania 3 is the last time Hulk Hogan successfully defended the WWF title on a pay-per-view. He was 0-4 in title defenses after that. Despite many people assuming Triple H buried other wrestlers, he has the most losses ever at WrestleMania. The Rock mm -hmm. lost every world title match he was in at WrestleMania. Wow. Becky Lynch, Sasha Banks, and Charlotte Flair competed in a historic triple threat match at WrestleMania 32 on April 3rd, 2016. This match was significant because it was the first women's match at WrestleMania to go past the 10 minute mark. It lasted 16 minutes and 3 seconds. Undertaker defeated every member of Evolution at WrestleMania. That's crazy when you think about it. He has. Yep. He's beating all of Evolution at WrestleMania. WrestleMania 2000 is the only WrestleMania not to feature a traditional male singles match. Hulk Hogan's only clean loss in his second run from 85 to 93 was to Ultimate Warrior at WrestleMania 6. Yep. Edge is the only multi-time Royal Rumble winner to not win the world title at WrestleMania. The Undertaker mm. has main evented WrestleMania across four different decades. In the 90s, he main evented against Psycho Sid. In the 2000s, he main evented against Edge. In the mm -hmm. 2010s, he main evented against Shawn Michaels and Roman Reigns. And in the 2020s, he took yep. on AJ Styles. WrestleMania 2 is the only WrestleMania event to take place on a Monday. Since The Undertaker's WrestleMania streak has been conquered, Bianca Belair holds the current record at five matches undefeated. Wow. While Rob Van Dam holds the record for the men at just four matches unbeaten. Since WrestleMania 20 only the Miz and Daniel Bryan main evented WrestleMania having never won a Royal Rumble. Randy Orton hasn't won a pay per view mm. match on his own since WrestleMania 37 against Bray Wyatt. WrestleMania 19 featured a unique main event where both participants used their real names. The main event was a match between Kurt Angle and Brock Lesnar for classic, the WWE Championship. Classic. The actual fastest match in WWE wasn't Aaliyah versus Natalya at 3.17 seconds, but in fact it was Chris Jericho and Jerry Lawler versus Taz and Midian, which ended in just 2.1 wow. seconds. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> El Torito has the second best win percentage in WWE history at 91.78%. Comedy what? jobber James Ellsworth is the only wrestler in WWE to have three consecutive victories over AJ Styles. And what makes this even worse? That that's 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 a fucking crime. That's a fucking crime. First is that it was while Styles was WWE champion. <laughs> Triple H and Rey Mysterio have never had a feud or one-on-one -on -one match, despite mm. having been active in WWE together for over a decade. Wow. Brock Lesnar has never been pinned on Monday Night Raw, and a big reason for this <laughs> might be that Brock Lesnar hasn't actually- This nigga has never been pinned on Raw. <laughs> I didn't know that about Triple H and Rey. You would think. They never had, they had a feud. A feud or one on one mm. match, despite having been active in WWE together for over a decade. Brock Lesnar has never been pinned on Monday Night Raw. And a big reason for this might be that Brock Lesnar hasn't actually wrestled a match on Raw since July of 2002. Ooh. However, Taz and Spike Dudley did beat Brock Lesnar and Batista in a dark match, with Spike Dudley pinning Batista. <laughs> The phrase RKO out of nowhere became linked with Orton's RKO, mm -hmm. as the move was recognized for its abrupt and surprising nature. Jim Ross first introduced the term during Randy Orton's match against Chris Benoit at SummerSlam 2004. The second time! And oh my god! John Cena mm. hasn't won any of his matches at SummerSlam since 2010. Bret wow. Hart just lasted 15 minutes in all five of his Royal Rumble appearances. Mick Foley was 10% of a Royal Rumble match one year. He entered as Mankind, Cactus oh, yeah, Jack, I and Doodle. The match therefore consisted of three Mick Foley's out of the 30 total participants. In 1999, The Rock underwent breast reduction surgery to address gynecomastia, a condition that causes enlarged breast tissue in men. This surgery was aimed at reducing the appearance of what is commonly referred to as man boobs, helping him oh. to achieve his desired physique for his wrestling and acting career. The 500 dollar shirts The Rock wore were also worn by Jerry Lawler on commentary. Oh. Randy Orton once used CM Punk's old entrance theme song This, no, about this one too. in 2006 before it was given to Punk because it apparently fit him better. Yeah, if it's, if it's Punk better. 
CM Punk's ring name has been the source of discussion for many years. The CM initials originally stood for Chick, Chick Magnet. Magnet. Chris Jericho was originally going to wrestle under the name Jack Action or Sean Skywalker, which ultimately did not stick. Although Shawn Michaels and Eddie Guerrero never had a one-on-one -on -one dream match, there was one occasion where both wrestlers exchanged punches. This happened as part of the storyline where SmackDown was invading Raw on October 3rd, 2005, during an off-air segment following the Raw broadcast building up to their Survivor Series match later that year. That's crazy when you think about it. And they were in fact rumored to have a match at that year's WrestleMania before Eddie's untimely passing. Oh, Rosa Mendes man. worked in WWE for nine years, 11 if you count developmental, but she has just one televised singles win and it only came thanks to a DQ. But look at she is the winner of this match as a result of a disqualification, Rosa Mendes. Rosa never pinned anyone in a one-on-one -on -one match on the main roster. Wow. Some might argue that she wrestled mostly in tag matches, but Mendes was on the losing team for 90% of them too. Triple H began being called the King of Kings in 2006. However, the game actually used this term for the first time during a promo two years prior on the September 13, 2004 Raw. The King of Kings, baby, is back! The King is back on his throne! Even though the lead singer from the band The Police was known as Sting First, the wrestler of the same name is the one who actually owns the name. This is because mm. the Stinger was the first to trademark it. Therefore, in order oh. for the singer to keep using the name, he and the former WCW icon made an agreement where the singer pays the wrestler $1 a year to use the Sting moniker. Cody Rhodes. Wow. That's actually, that's actually cool of him, bro. He did, he could have been an asshole about it. Bro, that's actually, I man, I never would have known that. But WCW icon made an agreement where the singer pays the wrestler one dollar a year to use the Sting moniker. That's cool, bro. That he he could have been an ass, but he's like, nah, bro. Just pay me like a dollar a year, bro. That's cool. He didn't have to. That's cool. That's some that's some chill shit. Cause somebody you know could easily be like, nah, you gonna pay me like this out ever much a year to use my name. No, just pay me a dollar, bro. I'm not tripping, bro. That's cool. Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns both made their WWE debuts at the same event. The first WWE televised event future WrestleMania opponents Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns appeared on was the 2007 Hall of Fame. This really? was for their respective father's induction speeches. Dusty Rhodes and Seeker, the latter oh. of whom went in as part of the Wild Samoans tag team along with Afa. Wow. Dustin Runnels and Cody Rhodes. It's crazy how things come full circle, bro. Hulk Hogan and Sting's match from Starcade 1997 is famous for the botched count from Nick Patrick that was meant to be a fast count after Hogan told him to do so. Despite Eric Bischoff telling Nick to do the opposite, realizing he was about to be screwed, Sting raises his right shoulder from the mat, meaning in kayfabe there should be no controversy surrounding this spot, since Sting technically kicked out. In his youth, Vince Damn. McMahon and his mother were estranged from McMahon's father, Vince Sr. Vince Jr. grew up in a trailer park in mm -hmm. North Carolina with his mom, where he was known as Vinnie Lupton. The last name was inherited from his then stepfather, Leo Lupton. Upton, someone who Vince wanted to personally unalive, but he was unable to since Leo passed before McMahon could do so. Mick Foley was the only person to kiss Vince McMahon's asshole. Any wrestler that joined the Vince McMahon Kiss My Ass Club either did so by kissing his butt cheeks or by having their head shoved into it, but Mick Foley was the only one to really pucker up and stick his whole head into Vince's butthole. Rhino was a originally going to be brought in as the long-lost little brother of Edge and Christian. The WWE had even asked if he had any objections to dyeing his hair blonde. Rhino stated that Edge and Christian were able to convince Creative to let him stay as Rhino by pointing out that he had a following from ECW, Which who is good. through the new character. The name Mary was also pitched for Rhino. It took 54 years for the WWE Championship to change hands outside of the US and Canada. It happened when AJ Styles defeated Jinder Mahal on SmackDown in Manchester in November 2017. Phenomenal Love to see it. Dustin Rose has wrestled in five different decades. Sting is the only wrestler to be in a WCW, TNA, WWE, and AEW video game. Crazy. Shane McMahon went through the Armageddon Hell in a Cell dive rehearsal twice to persuade Rikishi to go through with it. Rikishi, being the heaviest wrestler to ever perform the leap from the top of the cell, required specific adjustments and extra precautions uh -huh. to ensure it was safe for him. The padding. Wait, so, Sh so Shane did it himself just to kind of like convince him i'm guessing in a Where's wcw it? tna wwe and aew video game shane mcmahon went through the armageddon hell in a cell dive rehearsal twice to persuade rikishi to go through wow shane 
crazy, crazy daredevil just to, you know, show show his dad and the boys that, you know, He's committed to it, to the business. That's crazy, bro. With it. Rikishi, being the heaviest wrestler to ever perform the leap from the top of the cell, required specific adjustments and extra precautions to ensure it was safe for him. <laughs> Woo! Fans used to call Owen Hart Nugget because Shawn Michaels and Triple H compared him to the last nugget of shit that won't quite flush down the toilet since he was the last Hart family member left in the WWE. Wow. Owen Hart, you, my friend, are that small little stinky stanky nugget that just refuses to get flushed down the hopper. Dean Ambrose originally used the this headlock driver as his finisher in WWE, but he found it challenging to execute on taller opponents like Randy Orton and Kane. To adapt, he developed the Dirty Deeds, which is mm -hmm. a more versatile and impactful move. Chris Jericho once called The Undertaker boring during a promo, which caused backstage tension. Oh. His comments led to backlash from fellow wrestlers, including Shawn Michaels. Personification of evil? I say personification of boredom. Whoa. Hulk Hogan wrestled uh -oh. more matches than The Rock after the passing the torch match at WrestleMania 18. Between Ric Flair's first and last match, Trish Stratus was born, debuted, retired, returned, <laughs> and retired again. <laughs> Triple H and Shane McMahon are now as old as Vince was in the Attitude Era. We are less wow. than a year away from the company being WWE, longer than it was WWF. And lastly, Stephanie McMahon is an anagram of the Macho Man penis. The more you know. What? <laughs> what? Why? What? 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 Era. We are less than a year away from the company being WWE, longer than it was WWF. And lastly, Stephanie McMahon is an anagram of the macho man penis. The more Who? Wait a minute. Who even thinks of that? WWF. And lastly, Stephanie McMahon is an anagram of the macho man penis. The more you know. I'm just trying to figure out who... Who would have even thought of that? To think, to switch the letters around. <laughs> Alright, man. <laughs> this was a very dope, informative video. <laughs> Comment down below. Let me know what WWE fact surprised you the most. I think one of them definitely has to be that last one because i i just never would have even thought about that but i appreciate our love and support pro 250k appreciate y'all kicking with me and i see you on the next one peace what the